All right, so uh, we're talking about kinetics. Um, and so kinetics we talked about being, you know, the the rate at which a reaction goes or the speed of a chemical reaction. And we will measure that um, using a reaction rate. And uh, rates are really no different from the particular types of rates that we've seen before, like we've talked about velocities being, you know, in miles per hour or you know, maybe water is flowing in a river at the number of gallons per minute or through a pipe. And, uh, you know, when we talk about it, we talk about a reaction, we're going to talk about the reactants or products and the rate at which they're either appearing or disappearing. So reactants are going to be disappearing and products are going to be appearing. And we're going to represent the reaction rate uh, based on the speed at which the reactants are disappearing or the products are appearing. And you'll be able to see down at the bottom of the slide, we can write a mathematical expression for the reaction rate, where it will be the change in concentration over the change in time, um, where the concentration will be the concentration or the molarity, uh, generally, of the, the reactant um, as it's changing over some change in time. Now, those of, the, of you that are mathematically minded may right away say that looks a lot like a slope. All right, change in y over change in x, and we're going to be looking at some uh, mathematical plots of, of of the progress of a reaction a little bit later, and being able to use those plots to determine what the reaction rate would be. Our reaction rates aren't going to be as simple as that, uh, what we have at the bottom, but conceptually that's what they're going to be. And we're going to have to learn or understand how we're going to be able to write relative reaction, reaction rate expressions. So we're always going to choose one of the products or one of the reactants to write that relative reaction rate or write that reaction rate expression for. Um, and you're going to see in some of the, the example problems that we do, we're actually going to write that expression for each of the different reactants in each of the different products. Now, I will tell you that sometimes you'll see something where you'll be asked for or someone will talk about the overall reaction rate. That is usually the reaction rate expression that's written for a compound, a product or a reactant, uh, usually a reactant, that has a coefficient of 1 in the balanced chemical equation. And one of the things we have to think about is we have to still remember that we have to balance chemical equations. Um, a lot of you on your... Um, uh, on, the, on exam two, went through some of the problems and you never balanced a chemical uh, reaction, especially for solubility. And that absolutely, we have to do that every time. It doesn't change with kinetics. Then once we've written that change in concentration over change in time um, portion of the reaction rate, we have to divide that or multiply by a fraction using the stoichiometric coefficient. Um, we'll look to see how to do that in an example, and then we're going to provide the appropriate sign. So things that are disappearing, the rate is going to be negative. All right, things that are going to be appearing, appearing the rate's going to be positive. And you'll notice at the bottom there are some places because we're not only going to write these expressions, we're going to also learn how to perform the calculation. We're going to do that a couple different ways, depending on what type of reaction rate um, we want to be expressing. So, if we look and we have this particular uh, chemical reaction, um, the small letters, <clears throat> the small letters uh, represent the stoichiometric coefficients from balancing the equation, um, and we want to write the rate expressions for each of the reactions and products. We would write them this way. We would say that the reaction rate is equal to the change in the concentration of reactant A over the change in time. But then we have to take into account the stoichiometric coefficient, so we would then divide that by the small a, all right, or multiply by 1 over a. And because the reactants, reactant A is disappearing, that rate will have a minus sign, or it will be negative. If we do the same thing with B, it would look the same for B. Change in concentration of B over change in time times the fraction 1 over B, and it would be negative because it's disappearing. The products C and D are appearing, and so their reaction rates are going to be positive in this expression. 
are going to be positive, but the change in concentration of C over change in time will be multiplied by 1 over small c, small c being the stoichiometric coefficient in front of C in the balanced chemical equation. And for D, it would just be the change in concentration of D over the change in time, times the fraction 1 over small d, with d again being the stoichiometric coefficient. We're going to learn how to write this in a, in a later video. Um, with these screen captures, the way that I'm doing them um, right now, I can't intersplice that webcam in the middle. So um, I will have another video showing how to work this. Uh, you might say, why did you change up the videos? And it is because the restrictions on working going into your, your job have changed since the time that um, I've started recording these videos and so um, they've asked us to really not go into the college if we unless we absolutely need to so I decided to sort of make the jump to recording most of the videos if not all the videos here at home now now you know theoretically it's great to be able to to write expressions like that but but you know it, when we're in the lab we we oftentimes don't know what those concentrations are unless we measure them and so, you know, the way that we determine an actual reaction rate will be that we've got to monitor something about the chemical system over time. Uh, you can do this a number of different ways. You might be looking at the absorbance. Maybe the color of a, re of a reactant um, will disappear as that reactant um, reacts away and produces product. Um, maybe we monitor the amount of product that's produced by measuring the concentration um, or the absorbance of the product that's produced if the product absorbs light. It could be we're measuring the concentration of the of the reactants or products using another instrument like mass spec uh, or GC or um, some other form of chemical measurement. But we measure that versus time. And so, you know, whenever you start, you mix the two things together the reactants together that's time zero then after two seconds well it still looks the same as it does after 15 seconds it's lighter because obviously one of the reactants is this pink or purplish color after 41 seconds almost all the color is gone and so we can then use that to determine what the um, reaction rate would be and we're going to see how to do that in a couple of different ways so these first three steps are the steps that we had before. How do you write the reaction rate expression? How do you write that expression, change in concentration over change in time? Um, how do we write that? And then number four and five are the new parts. That's where we're basically going to start plugging things in for change in concentration or for change in time. And then we're just going to calculate the value for that rate. Um, and now... Remember that whenever we represent a change in anything, it's always final minus initial. Uh, I understand that if you've taken physics before or if you're a, a physics student right now, um, that uh, oftentimes physicists will look at things as initial minus final, but chemists look at things as final minus initial. That's the, that's the, um, the convention that we use. And so basically it is just like, it's just calculating those things. If you say this feels a lot like calculating slopes, you would be right. Slopes are change in, in y over change in x. We're actually going to do that same type of thing, and we're going to plug in and calculate slopes of lines. And that's basically what we're going to be calculating when we calculate reaction rates. Um, and so first of two things, uh, you know, if we would go back and we would plot the, let's say we were measuring the absorbance at each of these points, 0 and 2 seconds and 15 and 41 seconds, we could then make an expression where we might have the concentration on the y or the absorbance on the y, and we would have the time on the x. And, uh, you know, let's say, for instance, that we wanted to calculate what the slope was of the reaction or what the reaction rate would be between time equals 0 and time equals 4. If that's the case, we'd be calculating what we'd call the average reaction rate between time equals 0 and time equals 4. And if we would go onto that plot, and we would go at time equals 0 and figure out what the concentration or the absorbance would be, and we would go at time equals 4 and figure out what the concentration uh, or the absorbance would be, 
we could then use that to find in an, uh, to, to calculate final minus initial to find out the change in the concentration of that analyte and we could look at the time and we could do final time minus initial time to calculate the change in time what we'd be doing is <clears throat> we'd be calculating the slope of that green line and you might say to yourself well that green line surely doesn't represent that plot that black line which was a plot of the actual concentration versus time so it doesn't represent it very well and you would be right but it gives us an idea of what the reaction rate would be between those two times so you know when you think about average and in some ways we're thinking about you know like just sort of a you know not a not an exact but like an estimated reaction rate that we might be able to use um, and we would calculate that between those times and the change in concentration and the change in time would be fairly straightforward. We would read everything from the plot and then we could represent or we could calculate the average reaction rate. And, um, you know, the way that this might look is you might have a plot that you would have to read the things from or you could have a table of data where you would want to know what the, you know, what the average reaction rate would be between uh, time one, uh, one second and four seconds. And you could calculate that. And if you look at this is actually a problem and we're going to work this problem a little bit later. So we'll talk about it a little bit more. But this is an average reaction rate. So we can calculate the average rate of reaction um, for this particular chemical reaction using that plot or using a table of data. Next, we might want to know what the instantaneous reaction rate would be. So what is the reaction rate at time equals 4 seconds? And to calculate that, what we would be instead doing, instead of doing that average, where we're sort of trying to represent what that curve looks like, we would be looking at the slope of the line tangent to that concentration versus time curve, that black curve, at time equal four. So we'd be calculating the slope of that green line. All right. Now, the challenging part about this for us is that oftentimes we may not have a mathematical expression for how the concentration of A is changing with time. Um, you know, in calculus, you get used to calculating, okay, what's the slope of the tangent line at this point? Um, on a on a curve here we're not oftentimes going to have that so you know if we want you to calculate an instantaneous reaction rate we are going to want you to um, calculate we're going to want you to calculate based on a tangent line and that tangent line generally will have to be given to you um, so that you can then use that and use the the plot or the axes to figure out what the slope of that green line would be. Again, this is something that we're going to work on together uh, in a series of series of problems coming up. So I just want you to understand or appreciate that there are differences between average and instantaneous reaction rates um, at this point and understand why we might calculate one versus another. Here's an example where we're looking at the, the disappearance of oxygen okay, in a chemical reaction. And so the disappearance of oxygen in this chemical reaction is represented by the green curve. If we want to know the instantaneous rate of reaction at time equals 2,000 seconds, all right, we would need to know what the, um, what the, uh, the tangent line would look like at that point. And you can see on the right, you can see the tangent line is actually expressed. Um, and we could then use the plot, the axes of the plot, to determine what the slope of that line would be by looking at the change in concentration over the change in time. And that would help us to express the reaction rate at t equals 2,000 seconds. All right, so that's sort of uh, where we're at. Um, that's sort of where we're at right now with, um, with uh, reaction rates. That's uh, where we're going to get to for this week in terms of reaction rates. Um, and then uh, we're going to uh, do a whole nother week of, of kinetics. So um, uh, 
yeah, so we're going to do a whole other week of kinetics, and that will be uh, the following week. So um, I don't know why I chose to to start mumbling and just start rambling at this point, but the video is basically over. That was all the more I was trying to say, but I just couldn't find any good words for it. So I'm just going to stop it now. Um, yeah, so I'm just stopping.